Hey everyone, it's April 9th or 10th or something like that, and we're going to do a little layout tour here of the Oregon City N scale layout. We started this, gosh, about 2010 or 11, and it's uh, based on Southern Pacific's Brooklyn subdivision south from Portland and the Cascade subdivision south from Eugene. Take you for a little tour around the layout here. It's kind of a you know dog bone shaped on the west, north, and east walls. Start over here in southeast Portland at Brooklyn Yard. This is set in the late 90s, early 2000s. And some people are probably saying, now wait a minute, what's what's with the steam engine and the Alco PA and the F7? Well, all of these engines lived at at the uh, Brooklyn Yard. The Daylight 4449 is owned by the city of Portland. Inside is uh, my recreation of the 700. It's not very good, so it doesn't stick its nose out. The X Great Northern F7 is owned by Doyle McCormick, who was the engineer on the American Freedom Train and the caretaker of 4449. The Alco PA is what his shell looked like when they brought it up from Mexico. It's now restored as Nickel Plate 190. And we'll let this short little uh, Mount Rainier or Willamette Valley go by. Modeled some Southeast Portland sites. Would it be Southeast Portland without homeless camps and blue and green tarps everywhere? We've sort of got a produce row Southeast Portland area with, as it is, we've got some prototype buildings. I've got some videos of the actual prototype. It was hard finding end scale shopping carts, but we got a few for the camps. It doesn't really butt up against Brooklyn Yard like this, but it's the closest we can do. We've got fuel tracks. We've got engines moving around back there. Tried to spend a little time getting the details right. It's not prototypic Brooklyn Yard, but and this is stub end. We mainly use it for car storage and stuff. But put some real pictures of some Portland buildings in the background. It simulates looking across the tracks through southeast Portland and seeing the buildings across the way. We even show some of the street running and where there had been street running. You see that in Portland a lot in the produce row area where the rails come through. And we're kind of tickled with this. Uh, we mainly have 80s, 90s, SP power, UP power. There's some Portland and Western, uh, our local Genesee and Wyoming affiliate. And that's exactly what that engine looks like, the Santa Fe sticking through. We do some areas where there's some patch overs. Because of the mid 90s you can see Rio Grande. You can see <laughs> SD9s as we still saw them way in the 90s along with more modern power. I like to run passenger trains so you'll see a variety of uh, 80s and 90s Amtrak power on the layout. I also love early 70s rainbow era. I don't have them out, but I have Amtrak E8s and E9s and passenger cars from like Great Northern, Burlington Northern, and I love running rainbow era Amtraks. That's what I grew up seeing. Uh, those of you that have seen this before, you know that I have a love for the Southern Railway. That's what I grew up watching, so we might look at some of that later on. But I try to make it look like what taking my little boy <laughs> when he was little, in the early 90s, down to Brooklyn Yard, down to see Doyle, down to let him climb it around the daylight, 
the 700 when he was a little guy. And then you'd see, oh, when, when the Talgos came in, those new F-59 PHIs, they look pretty cool. But then you could still see cotton belt power and normal Oregon train of wood chips, lumber. Now we live outside Oregon City, and Oregon City's kind of neat because it has three distinct levels. I was able to model two of them here. I'd be standing in what's what would be the Willamette River, and the lower level here still featured street running up into the late 90s. They would block Highway 99E with these units late at night, and they would switch the Blue Heron Paper Company, which uh, is a huge area. It's going to be all rebuilt, and this is just a small representation. But you get the idea of a paper company, and it did have a very steep spur up to the SP main line. It's not, I don't think it was 6.6%, which what this one is, as I found out doing the uh, switching challenge. But the second layer of Oregon City is a residential area. We've got this municipal elevator, and the tracks run right underneath it, just like so. And uh, my dentist is up there to the left. And then the third level would be up beyond these trees and that. So, we like switching Oregon City once in a while. I, I mainly, I, I'm not huge into operations, but once in a while I'll, I'll move some cars around down here, but I rarely send car A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4 from Industry A to Industry B. I mainly just like looking at trains and running them. And uh, I also like setting up photos of actual trains. We're going to show the first Amtrak Crescent coming up. And we're going to compare it to the very last Southern Railway, uh, Southern Crescent, February 1st, 1979. We'll do that. Um, this area represents uh, Canby, Oregon, with the Canby Depot Museum. My buildings are not fixed on the ground. So I can restaurant over here, move things around, and it becomes Mike's Drive-In in Milwaukee. Pull the things out change some cars around, change the background, and you got a prototype location. So that's one of the things I like to do. Down on the Clackamas River, we got some guys fishing for salmon. The AMR lifeguards in their little hut. And the High Rocks area. Got some folks in canoes, all that good stuff. A little residential area. I think there's even a young rail fan here. Hey, he's waving at the trains. So as we move through Oregon City and the paper company, we move into the beautiful Willamette Valley. Mount Hood, standing watch over everything, over the cornfields, farmhouse. It's Oregon, so you got to have a rusty jet car back there on the property. Got some horses. Got our beautiful farmhouse. Vegetable garden. Getting up round bales. Got our livestock. We got our pens. We got Amtrak hopping down the valley here. wouldn't be an Oregon farm without the Christmas trees. Then we move into our mountainous area. So we go up along Highway 58 out of Eugene. Just a short, it's like, what do you do with this peninsula? Well, you make a little bit of a highway on it. We got the CJ Sawmill here. We got our uh, rail fanning blazer that we drove, our 95. When my son was two, put many miles on that. And then we've got a typical little sawmill up in the Oregon high country. A 
lumber loads, the mill working. Your classic old box car used to storage track that's out of how to use hasn't been used for a long time. That one switch engine to switch it. Yeah, people goofing around, taking breaks, just sitting around, goofing off. And then as we come up through the, the hill area, got some campers. And this is probably my favorite spot on the whole layout get scenes and I didn't design it for photography or anything but I just love as it comes through this S. Now the last time I made a layout tour this is all still Caddo Unitrack. I've gotten rid of almost all of it except some of this area here. It's Tunnel 3 or Tunnel 4 or whatever tunnel I <laughs> decide it's going to be that day. But I made this little extension also, so it's neat to be able to shoot up and get the trains. Some paint on the wall, looks good, Mount Jefferson in the background. There's some graffiti on here from 1987. This is just, it's cardboard lattice with plaster cloth over it. And most of these trees are, they were flocked Christmas trees, like from the hobby stores and the craft stores, buy them by the, <laughs> the ton at the end of the holidays, and then just spray, spray paint them different parts of green. Sky blue walls, and then some blue paint for, or <laughs> sorry, some uh, white paint for clouds. Starting to see this a little more. Some contrails, some jets. Kind of nice to see. Our foam cut. One of my favorite locations to film in both real life and on the layout is right here on the side of 99. Trains come through Oregon City. Underneath is all the Storage and bins here. Keep all the extra cars, locomotives, work area. But I thought for this one we'd make it look kind of pretty. It's probably time to run a freight train. Bring down some big power, couple onto some of these freight cars. That'll do. I have a cross in front of my old car, 72 Plymouth Roadrunner, Tor Red, 400 four speed. Grandpa Rails is a big fan of that.
So as our freight heads back up into Oregon City, we'll call it a day for now. Thank you for enjoying our tour. Hope you like some of the little detail we put down. It's uh, certainly not the best layout around, but uh, not the worst. And we sure have fun. And when it gets dark, we can even flip on the lights. So good night from Oregon City. Thanks for watching the tour. Please subscribe. Take a look at all the videos. Talk to you later. I talked about how I like doing uh, photo recreations. Um, this is the last Southern Crescent. It'd be January what 30, 31st. Never remember that rhyme. Of 1979. The last Amtrak one. Yeah, they weren't wearing their bicentennial decals by then, but... Oh well, I'm not going to take them off for that. So that our normal consist of our southern cars and then the two Amtrak through cars down to New Orleans. So here's how it looked different on, Jan or on February 1st, 79, the first one of Amtrak. Yep, a big change. An Amtrak E8 in the three stripe scream put on to the identical train. Uh, as, the, as the 79 and 80 went on, F40 started replacing the Amtrak E's and uh, the E8's were sold off to various agencies. But I like recreating trains like that. And uh, if you look at the channel, you see I do like 1972 uh, Hiawatha, North Coast Hiawatha's Empire Builders with a bunch of different cars. I love doing like a 73 or 74 San Francisco Zephyr with SDP 40Fs and uh, Union Pacific E9s and a variety of cars. That's just fun. That's just fun stuff. So, just a little, how do you do a recreation? <laughs> we'll talk to you later.